So we're going to go ahead and and get started on the next part for her Blair, and that's this piece here. So we just finished the bushing, and I've been trying to get everything ready to uh, start this, getting some uh, measurements and some notes wrote down on my pad there. Uh, we've got we know we got an eight millimeter set screw hole here. <clears throat> the uh, the slot right here, I believe it's uh, 10 mil, but it's it's a little oversized right there. But I think we I think we'll be okay. What I want to do is I want to bead blast it and get all this paint off, and uh, we'll probably we'll probably warm this one up just like we had to do the bushing. Make sure there's no oil impregnated in it, and then once we do, we'll uh, we'll get it ground and TIG it together with the silicon bronze just like just like I did with the bushing. The uh, only problem is I'm almost out of those rods. I think there's two pieces left over there. So I may have to wait until uh, this coming week to uh, run over to air gas and get a get a package of the, uh, the silicon bronze TIG rods there so I can get this finished up. We're also going to machine a plug that will uh, fit in here nice and close. That way, whenever I get it all clamped together, it'll, it'll be it'll be like it needs to be. Hopefully, I can get it tacked off good, and then maybe uh, remove that plug. What would be great is if I had a piece of carbon that I could machine to fit in there, but I don't have any around here. So we'll just make a steel plug out of some material we got, and then uh, slide it out when once we get it tacked up there. So, all right, we'll get started on it. All right, we got the parts bead blasted, and well, you can really see the roughness of the cast after you blast all that paint off. It looks smooth. So I just want to do a heat on this because it could have oil in it, just like that other part. So we'll find out here real quick. Get the light, uh, the torch lit up, and get going. If it ain't gonna be like that other piece. All right, I think we're gonna be good on this one. It's starting to get hot and it's not boiling oil out of it, so. I'll just let that cool back down now and uh, then we'll do our grinding. Now I'm going to go ahead and start grinding the, uh, the pieces here. So I'm going to use my new uh, grinder and these, these uh, flap, type, flap wheel type grinding wheels that uh, one of the viewers had sent in for me to try. Also got one of the larger ones here. So we'll see how they do. bad doing pretty good uh, I don't think I need to use them for all the heavy grinding maybe some touch up here or get into some smaller spots so let me uh, let me save these they're, they're doing good but I think I need to use my grinder and get the bulk of it off there first
All right, I believe I've got it ground pretty good for uh, filling that sucker up. I'm see, I'm trying to avoid that set screw hole. I have a <clears throat> I'll be able to run a tap through there and clean that up. But we should be able to clamp this together good. I've got just enough of the crack there left for it to register up on. I think it'll do pretty good. We'll make our little plug <clears throat> and clamp it all together nice and tight and start welding that thing up. Okay. All right, I'm going to make this little lineup plug real quick. We've got a piece of 1 and 3 16 stress proof here. We got to turn it down to uh, about 1.106. I like the hole being at 1.107. need like an inch not a not a whole lot about an inch and an eighth there a little big there I have to take another thousandths off of it yeah no there we go I did get it right look at that just didn't hold my mouth right okay that'll work there so we'll just take that and I'll go to the uh, to the bandsaw and cut me off a little plug and then we should be able to start welding this thing up all right I'm gonna go ahead and start clamping these together and I uh, got my plug in there I'm actually uh, dipping into one of my viewer mail boxes that I haven't got to show on video yet but uh, I'm gonna use these can't twist clamps and these are from uh, Jesse Fenton and uh, we'll be we'll be sharing these on SNS pretty soon though but they were going to be perfect clamps for what I want to do here so that's why I grabbed them so what I'm going to do is put one on here like this to try to pull the two pieces together okay alright that's nice and tight on the plug there I want to put another one on this end um, try to hold that together and it should be flat but I thought about one more so, so here's the next size right here we're gonna go ahead and use one of these to uh, see if we can make sure that it's all nice and square and then snug up the other two there okay all right
Thought I had somebody pull up. I heard something. That was the neighbors. Okay, let's see. We got those. I think we got everything tight. Like I said, I just used that to try to make sure that it was pulled down flat on the table there. Okay. Crack looks nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and see if we can get us some uh, some nice tacks in there and hold everything together. And then I'll uh, I'm going to take this plug out because I don't want to weld it to the plug. That's where I just need I really need some carbon sticks, but I don't have any. So and uh, there's my wife. So we'll be back. This is something that I do sometimes when I need to weld. In this case, being something being flat, or I need to clamp something down. I like I like being up where I ain't got to bend over. So uh, I just clamp a plate in there and just lay it on it. So all right, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying some weld to it. I'm not gonna use the uh, the shield for the camera because it just doesn't work well. And I've only got uh, two of these rods left, so I might be able to get it filled up, but I don't I don't think I'm gonna have enough. trying to get it nice and hot so that that uh, rod will flow in there good. far so good so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start running a nice little root pass down this long crack here okay Alright, we got her flowing in there nice. And I'm gonna keep <clears throat> filling that up. Here I'm just building it up, making sure that it's above the surface there. The 
does pretty good in the corners of not trying to like roll over and fall off. I'm gonna go ahead and get get this side filled in some and then go back down there. This is uh I may not make it <laughs> another pass. This is all I got left. So we'll uh we'll see how far we can go though. Well that's all I got. There's the there's what's left of my silicon bronze. So I'm right at the end of being done. It really sucks that I can't finish it off. Um, I just don't feel like trying to tack those three little rods together. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go get me another pack of rods. And I got a little bit more I need to do inside the bore there. And I wanna I wanna go over this again with another bead and make sure it's high enough, especially in the corners. That way when I go and dress this down, it, hopefully it'll be nice and nice and filled in. So it's coming together. Yeah, I still got a little bit more to do in there too to tie those cracks in. So the last you see me, I had uh, run out of welding rod for this, so I went ahead and picked up some more silicon bronze, and I went ahead and finished out the uh, TIG welding on it like I wanted to do there so we got it welded up on the inside cracks and I went over this again and I probably added more than way more than what I should have but I was really trying to flow it in good <clears throat> and uh, I'm not really sure how the cracks are gonna the edge of the uh, the welds are gonna flow with the cast iron until we clean it up so I'm probably just gonna try to belt sand this instead of uh, doing any kind of fly cutting. I'll start with this side since there's only one small area Go over there and try to knock that down with the sander and then once I do just gently just just work it into the The belt to try to get it dressed evenly and to do the same thing on the other side I'll focus the uh, the best part of my belt on The high spots and just watch it as I as I go in with it and try to dress it flat and I think that'd be a a sufficient way to uh, make both sides of that flat and then once we do that uh, we'll have to come in here and cut this ID out so we may set this up on the mill afterwards and uh, probably this side here well we need to locate our our center hole and we can still do that even with the weld in here you take an average while you're sweeping it and make sure that your indicator is running zero everywhere so We'll get it lined up and we'll go through there and cut this out for the bushing to fit in there. So let's go ahead and uh, get some belt sanding done. Okay, I went ahead and changed my, my uh, belt out. I wanted something fresh that would, that would help cut this pretty fast. And I also did some uh, adjusting on the, uh, the tracking there. I've got a little adjustment here I can stick a a punch or something like that in there and uh, move this nut around so I've got her pretty well tracked and nice and straight on the roller so hopefully that new belt it'll cut it down pretty quick got that pretty well dressed down 
I had to do some uh, rapid cooling in the water there, it's just getting too hot. So <clears throat> we, uh, I think I might bead blast again just to get that that rusting off of it from dipping it, and then all I got to do is just touch it to each side, and it kind of brightens it up again. So next up, we need to go to the mill and see if we can get this hole rounded up. All right, getting her set up on the mill. So I'll point out my uh, reasoning behind the way I've got it set up. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll point out, if I had a little mini pallet, this would probably be a really easy job to set up on a mini pallet and your advice there. But <clears throat> I'm just clamping it straight down onto some parallels. And I opted this side because I only got one weld bead to, to worry about. So I've got it positioned in say a 45 off of center line there, okay? So that I can go from front to say top, bottom, side to side. I can get four equal sweeps on that and not even worry about going across that weld right there. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking front, back, side to side. So I'll position it that way. So we're gonna use the uh, Brown and Sharp Best Test. And I've got her, I haven't indicated it yet, by the way, I'm just, but I did get it close so it would speed things up here. And I got it to where it would touch here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna chase it back and forth. All right. Come this way a little bit. All right, so on the back side, we'll use a mirror and what mirror <laughs> would be better to use than the one that Herb Blair gave me this is his job this is the mirror that he gave me so uh, Herb I just opened it up I've been saving it <laughs> so we'll use your mirror whenever we're indicating the back here Just Okay, I'm happy with that. We got a little bit of out around us on the hole. So we got her within <clears throat> half thousandths in uh, four places right there. So that's where we're gonna bore it. Okay, I, I abandoned the carbide boring bar idea and I went with what, what always worked good for me, a tool bit. So we got that set up and I'm touched off now. Okay, and I've got my parallel moved so we won't crash into that. So let's go ahead and I'm just looking at the tool up against the wall right here. And all right, let's make a cut with that right there. I know what's going on now. 
the uh, inside the weld that's got I guess some of the cast iron has blended with the silicon bronze so there's some spots of iron in here and it's kind of tough it's gotten hard so that's what's going on that's why it's giving me problems so I'm gonna have to slow the speed down and and take it easy try to get this thing cut out So what I did is I slowed the I slowed the RPM down and I slowed the feed rate down and just taking my time try to go down through there but it's beating it pretty hard so I'm sure I'll have to regrind that tool again before I finish it. All right, fellas, I've already got. I've taken the last cut that I'm going to take with the boring head here. I'm just touching the uh, the original bore and the cast iron here, but I've got spots in here in the weld that are that are hard, so it's pushing off and it's leaving high spots in there. So the bushing won't fit because of those high spots. So instead of trying to keep going through there and uh, and cutting them, I'm going to take it out and use my little air grinder and a stone and go in there and just very lightly try to dress those so that they'll clear and allow the bushing to go through there okay i went ahead and ran the the boring bar through there twice just making a uh, spring pass and it actually helped cut some of it out on the uh on the back side we were cutting from See, the bushing tries to go in there but it's hitting the spot the hard spots there so it's almost there so I'm going to use this flap wheel right here and come in here and just uh, lightly polish where those weld, weld spots are, see if we can just hand fit this. And I like using my ear muss. This is a real noisy grinder right here. It's not a, not a very quiet grinder. I'm going to go to the side. Hand work it. Almost there. about there I just need to hit them hard them uh, hard spots a little bit more uh, that's about it I just got to keep working it just a little bit it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be much and we'll be good to go there okay so just uh, keep flapping it and we'll, we'll get her to fit All right, guys, we got her. <clears throat> I need to hit that corner just a little bit right there. Um, I flapped it just a couple more times in there on those hard spots, and we've got the bushing to fit now. It was, I did have it to where it was, you could push it in there with your hand tight. So I just hit that a couple more times. So that'll work. And there was a, there's a drilled hole right in this, right in this area here somewhere and uh, Herb said that that's for this set screw here and what he'll do is once he gets all this hooked up on his lathe and he'll orientate um, he'll position this where he wants it and then he'll drill a dimple there for the the set screw and that and that's what locks the bushing to this piece here is that set screw so uh, Herb's going to take care of that on his end once once he gets all this installed and, and put in place on his lathe there so he can make it fit the way he wants so all right 
All right, so there we have it. Herb, I think you're back in business. And I will be putting these in the mail tomorrow, or not tomorrow, today, Saturday, but Monday. I'll get these back to you, and, and uh, you should have them next week, and you can uh, put your lathe back together. So uh, one thing that I just remembered that I need to do is I'm going to run a, a tap through that hole right there, which is uh, 8 millimeter. I already got the tap out. I'm going to run that through there and make sure that the hole is cleaned out good. So I think that's it right there. And uh, Herb, I was happy to take care of this for you. Uh, you you've been a... You've been a uh, great across the machinist community there and, uh, uh, you know, making hammers for people and uh, contributing in uh, many ways. So I was happy to contribute also and uh, give and pay it forward to you. So there you go, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the repairs and uh, we'll talk to you soon.